So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a taxonomy or a classification system so that you can see how it is these different moral theories or these different ethical theories actually relate and differ from each other. So we're going to do again a taxonomy, a classification, and the way we're going to classify these things, the way that we're going to divide them up is really based on a definition of like the good, what counts as the moral good. So at our first level up here, right, we have two different approaches to ethics. The first approach, the one that we're going to kind of stick with in this course, is what we might call a rational approach. Uh, the rationalists believe that whatever counts as the good, uh, uh, human reason is key to determining it. So ultimately, rationality is the tool that we're going to use to figure out morality, right? So reason plays into it. Uh, one of the assumptions under one of the rational approaches is that there are moral facts. You might believe something, I might believe something about morals, and if those differ, we're probably both not right. That is, you can have people who believe things that are wrong, right? Um, uh, the uh, other approach that seems not very popular out in the world, but really, really popular in college classrooms, uh, are non-rational approaches, which say that really, Ethics uh, and counting the good are no different than figuring out what football team you want to root for. You have an emotion for it, but it's not based on reason. Um, the non-rational approaches are really hard to support. I don't think that very many people in real life believe that. Um, uh, sometimes it's nice to say that, you know, we can all be right about our moral theories, but if we said everybody was right, well then headhunters, um, uh, you know, killing us to, you know, uh, shrink our heads, that morality would be okay. Um, it would be hard to uh, criticize owning slaves um, because maybe slave owners find that, uh, you know, behavior, you know. So, so again, while this might be an approach certain students want to take because it helps get them out of all these moral dilemmas and stuff, uh, in the act of really living, the non-rational approaches are, are a tough road to walk. Right. Uh, so as far as these rational approaches go, our next big distinction really dis is between what is it that we're actually judging as moral or immoral. Uh, the action-based theories really focus in on particular actions. So what would count as good or bad are actions. So under these action-based theories, I'm tr trying to determine what a good action would be. What would be a bad action? Right, but, but the term the good applies to actions. Uh, it turns out that there's another tradition that says, no, 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 this, this is off. Instead, the phrase the good should actually apply to, to like people or ecosystems. So the goal here is not to do good. Instead, the goal under the virtue theories would be to be a good person or to, uh, again, live in a good environment. Or for us, you know, here at College of San Mateo, we want to be a good institution, right? So these are very, very different traditions. Uh, we'll start here because um, uh, that's where we are, right? Um, and as far as the virtue-based theory goes, probably the best example that we're going to look at is Aristotle's theory. <coughs> Aristotle believes that what counts as good, again, are people. And his theory is going to try to drive that. So when you look at that little film and read the reading, keep that kind of in mind. Another example of something that I think would count as uh, virtue ethics are um, uh, maybe environmental ethics, right? Where the goal isn't good or bad actions. The goal is we want to act in a way that we produce a good, sustaining environment, uh, something along those lines. Uh, by far, the majority of theories out there, though, around ethics are action-based theories, right? Um, uh, and uh, right off, we have a big distinction as far as the action-based theories go. Uh, what particular action do we want to look at to judge moral worth? Uh, consequentialism, it's a great word because it's kind of descriptive, they're looking at the consequent of your action. So my action is good or bad, depending on whether it produced favorable consequences, right? The other side of this is, no, 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 we don't want to judge what you did in fact do. What matters was what you were intending on doing, right? Where, where was your will? What were you thinking of doing? Where was your heart when you did the action, right? So again, we call that position the ontology. 
Both are action-based theories because we're judging the action in an individual performs as moral or immoral. But again, here your action is moral or immoral because the consequences of it. Here it has more to do with the intention of it. Uh, <coughs> let's start with deontology. Some really common examples of deontology, probably the ethical theory that most of you come to this class with is what we might refer to as divine command theory. And then this, this idea is the idea that right and wrong, good and bad are determined through divine command, usually found in some sort of sacred text. So people who follow the Ten Commandments and think the Ten Commandments, or maybe all of the commandments in the Old and New Testament, somehow make up their ethical theory, right? Or people who go to the Bible as a way to get information about how they ought to live their lives are, are believers of divine command theory, right? Um, um, again, this, this, this is super, super popular, but it's really, really difficult to, um, to employ uh, because, uh, you know, first of all, how many different sacred texts are out there? How many different religions? So what you would need to do first before you could figure out how you ought to act is you got to figure out whether or not God exists. You have to decide which of the various gods that are out there is the one and true God. And then you'd have to find out some way of actually figuring out how that God wanted you to act during your life. The problem with the sacred texts is even the newer ones are still hundreds of years old. And they don't really tell us much about what to do with used motor oil, right? Um, uh, you know, and, and a lot of them just don't seem like they're any longer um, uh, connected with some of our modern views, right? The New Testament, for example, makes lots of claims about how women ought to act. They ought to keep their heads covered. They ought to listen to their husbands and all things. Um, and I, I don't know, even, even good, ardent followers of the, the Bible sometimes question those claims. So what they're doing is they must have some other ethical theory that they are using kind of as a way to pick and choose which of the divine commands they're going to follow and which they're just going to conveniently ignore, right? Um, so the problem here, again, is there's a whole bunch of different religions. Um, um, uh, it, divine command theory is sometimes underdetermining. It doesn't help us figure out how to act in new and unique circumstances. Uh, and let's, let's just give it a try. If somebody said, hey, I did it because my God told me to, uh, frankly, most of us would say, wow, your God told you to do that. Huh, really interesting, um, right? Um, a better example for uh, 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 deontological view is gonna be Kant's ethical theory and his categorical imperative. So again, take a look at the video on Kant, see what he says, see how he says we can derive what constitutes good and bad action. Uh, back to consequentialism, probably the easiest form of consequentialism is what we might call hedonism. I think one of the videos you look at calls it uh, egoism. And this is the idea that I'm going to act in such a way that it brings me the most pleasure, the most happiness. So I think in the Bay Area, there's a lot of closet hedonists. There's a lot of people who live in really nice houses, they drive really nice cars, they act almost entirely out of their self-interest. That's not to say they're not gonna be nice to you, but typically they're oftentimes just nice to you because somehow that serves them. And lo and behold, as soon as you have nothing to offer them, zip, skedaddle, they're sort of gone, right? It is an ethical theory though, right? Because it's not a form of non-rationalism. I still have to decide before I act what's gonna bring me the most pleasure, right? So I might, upon, you know, this happens to be a Friday, and I might think, hey, an, e an evening of heavy drinking might bring me a whole lot of pleasure, but upon just a little bit of experience and reflection about past times that I've drank too much, I might realize that maybe a night of drinking, while pleasureful in the moment, might bring me greater pain than benefit, and so I may want to avoid it. So that actually, again, counts as a moral theory, um, uh, but it's really focused in on the individual. From there, we go up to what we might call tribalism, the idea that I have a moral obligation on my tribe and I ought to do the things that help out. And by tribe, we could say family. Maybe we put um, nationalism or patriotism here too, that somehow we ought to act in ways that benefit Americans, but you know, other people don't count as much, 
right? So, so notice there's this jump. I care about me and only me. Tribalism is, hey, I'm going to act in ways that benefit my particular group. And from there, we can bounce up to our next moral theory that we'll take a look at, utilitarianism. Right? Utilitarianism is this idea that I'm going to act in a way where I'm going to maximize what's called utility. And utility can be determined by taking total pleasure and subtracting the total amount of pain. Right? So I want to look at my actions. I got to try to anticipate how much pleasure, how much pain is going to be produced by that, and then act in sort of accordance with it. So these different theories are going to work really well with our intuition in certain cases and not with others. But I think that this taxonomy gives you a nice little overview of how these things are supposed to connect up. So again, watch the video on each one that better explains it. And if you need to, come back and watch this video and see how these kind of relate and how they differ, uh, uh, because that might be useful to you. Cool.